Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Hello, everyone. Today, we are exploring a process that has been crucial to human civilization for centuries, the journey from tree to timber, and finally, to lumber. From ancient hand tools to modern industrial machines, the evolution of lumber processing is a tale of ingenuity and technological advancement. So let's embark on this journey together and uncover the history and science behind how lumber is processed. The use of wood as a building material dates back to prehistoric times. Early humans utilized fallen branches and trees to construct shelters, tools, and weapons. As societies progressed, the need for more sophisticated building materials grew. The first significant leap in woodworking came with the invention of the stone axe around 6000 BC. This tool allowed humans to fell trees more efficiently, paving the way for the development of wooden structures. The ancient Egyptians were among the first to develop advanced woodworking techniques. They used copper tools to cut and shape wood, creating everything from furniture to boats. The use of wooden planks in shipbuilding marked a significant milestone, showcasing the versatility and importance of wood as a construction material. The Greeks and Romans further refined woodworking techniques, introducing saws, chisels, and planes. These innovations laid the foundation for the timber and lumber industries we know today. During the Middle Ages, woodworking techniques continued to evolve. The introduction of the water-powered sawmill in the 4th century AD revolutionized the processing of wood. These sawmills used the power of flowing water to turn large wheels, which in turn operated saw blades. This mechanization significantly increased the efficiency of cutting logs into planks, making wood more accessible and affordable. Sawmills became widespread in Europe by the 11th century, particularly in regions with abundant forests and rivers. The medieval sawmills varied in design, with some using vertical saw blades, while others employed horizontal ones. Despite their differences, these early sawmills shared a common goal, to produce uniform, high-quality lumber for construction and other purposes. The Renaissance period brought about a renewed interest in science and technology, leading to further advancements in woodworking. The development of the circular saw in the late 18th century marked a significant leap forward. Unlike the traditional up-and-down motion of saw blades, the circular saw offered continuous cutting action, resulting in faster and more efficient processing of wood. The Industrial Revolution in the 19th century transformed the lumber industry. Steam power replaced water power, allowing sawmills to operate in locations without access to rivers. The invention of the band saw in the early 1800s provided even greater precision and speed. These technological advancements led to the establishment of large-scale lumber mills, capable of processing vast quantities of wood to meet the demands of growing urban centers. The journey from tree to lumber begins in the forest. Logging is the process of harvesting trees, and it has undergone significant changes over the centuries. In the past, loggers relied on hand tools like axes and saws to fell trees. Today, logging is a highly mechanized industry. Chainsaws and feller bunchers, which are machines that can cut and gather several trees at once, have replaced traditional hand tools. Skidders and forwarders transport the felled trees to a central location, where they are loaded onto trucks and taken to the sawmill. Despite these technological advancements, logging remains a physically demanding and risky occupation. Once the logs arrive at the sawmill, the process of transforming them into lumber begins. The first step is debarking, where the outer bark of the log is removed. This is typically done using a machine called a debarker, which can strip the bark quickly and efficiently. Removing the bark is essential because it can dull saw blades and interfere with the milling process. Next, the logs are cut into smaller sections, known as cants, using a head saw or a head rig. This initial cut is critical, 
as it determines the quality and yield of the lumber. Modern sawmills use computer-controlled saws to optimize the cutting process, ensuring that each log is utilized to its fullest potential. The cants are then further processed into boards, planks, or beams, depending on the desired end product. The type of saw and cutting technique used in a sawmill can vary depending on the species of wood and the intended use of the lumber. The most common types of saws used in sawmills are circular saws, band saws, and gang saws. Circular saws are known for their speed and efficiency, while band saws offer greater precision and flexibility. Gang saws, which consist of multiple blades arranged in a frame, are used to cut multiple pieces of lumber simultaneously. Cutting techniques also play a crucial role in the quality of the lumber. The most common techniques are plane sawing, quarter sawing, and rift sawing. Plane sawing, also known as flat sawing, is the most efficient method and produces a variety of grain patterns. Quarter sawing involves cutting the log into quarters before slicing it into boards, resulting in a more uniform grain pattern and increased stability. Rift sawing, though less common, produces the most stable and visually appealing lumber, making it ideal for high-end furniture and cabinetry. After the logs have been cut into lumber, the next step is drying and seasoning. This is a crucial process that reduces the moisture content of the wood, preventing warping, cracking, and other forms of damage. There are two primary methods of drying lumber, air drying and kiln drying. Air drying involves stacking the lumber in a well-ventilated area and allowing it to dry naturally over time. This method is cost-effective, but can take several months to a year depending on the climate and the type of wood. Kiln drying, on the other hand, uses controlled heat and humidity to speed up the drying process. Lumber dried in a kiln can be ready for use in a matter of weeks. Kiln drying also allows for greater control over the final moisture content, resulting in more consistent and stable lumber. Once the lumber has been dried, it undergoes grading and sorting. Grading is the process of evaluating the quality of the lumber based on factors such as appearance, strength, and defects. There are several grading systems used around the world, with the most common being the National Hardwood Lumber Association, NHLA, grading rules for hardwoods and the American Softwood Lumber Standard for softwoods. Lumber is typically graded into categories such as select, common, and utility, with select being the highest quality. The grading process can be done manually by trained inspectors or automatically using computer vision systems. Sorting involves categorizing the lumber based on its grade, size, and species. This ensures that the right type of lumber is used for the right application, whether it's construction, furniture making, or cabinetry. The final step in the lumber processing journey is planing and finishing. Planing involves smoothing the surface of the lumber and bringing it to the desired thickness. This is typically done using a machine called a planer, which shaves off thin layers of wood to achieve a uniform surface. Planing not only improves the appearance of the lumber, but also makes it easier to work with in subsequent manufacturing processes. Finishing can include a variety of treatments, such as sanding, staining, and sealing. Sanding further smooths the surface of the wood, preparing it for finishing. Staining enhances the natural color and grain of the wood, while sealing protects it from moisture, insects, and other environmental factors. Depending on the intended use, the lumber may also be treated with preservatives or fire retardants to enhance its durability and safety. Looking to the future, the lumber industry continues to innovate and adapt to changing demands and environmental challenges. One of the most exciting developments is the rise of engineered wood products. Engineered wood, such as cross-laminated timber, CLT, and laminated veneer lumber, LVL, is made by bonding layers of wood together to create strong, durable, and versatile materials. These products are increasingly used in construction, offering a sustainable alternative to traditional building materials like steel and concrete. From the ancient hand tools of early humans to the high-tech sawmills of today, the journey from tree to lumber is a testament to human ingenuity and our enduring reliance on wood. 
As we move forward, it's crucial to balance the demand for wood products with the need to protect and preserve our forests. Sustainable forestry practices, technological advancements, and responsible global trade are key to ensuring that we can continue to enjoy the benefits of wood while safeguarding our planet for future generations. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey through the history and process of lumber production. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.